in the back. All right. This fragment here, we're bl blowing it up a bit more, you can see. And finally, you can see that's purple glass written there. He's written purple glass. That entire area was purple. Now, this is not just a unique thing. This occurs repeatedly. And I'll tell you exactly what the patterns are later on. The most intense phenomena were these, when another person in another room is looking at a target and the same time as the second person is sharing the same magnetic field, the accuracy becomes greater. So in other words, if you have one person here, one person here, you generate a condition that produces the same kind of magnetic field that influences the brain at the consciousness recreation pattern. What you'll find if whatever that person's looking at, the other person can actually draw accurately. Well, let me show you. Can the average person access distant information? At Laurentian University, we developed a technology by producing a device whereby the same complex magnetic fields are shared by two people separated at a distance. When that happens, the two brains become one. Okay? So here we have the actual technology. You can see one chamber. That's what we call the octopus. It's basically eight uh, solenoids that are, produce a accelerating configuration, a second derivative magnetic field. There's what it looks like. There's the person in one room. All right, with the octopus, there's a person in the other. Here's some examples. The actual target picture that one person is looking at is on the right hand. That's, you've seen that as the bridge down here in Sudbury. What they're drawn, what the other person's drawing, sitting in a separate room, and you can see the actual drawing, and you can actually see the letters or the words up there, and we've amplified them for you. Motion, bright long, vertical lines, wormhole, crowd, flower, explosion, passing stuff moving through. The essential aspects of that hidden target have been extracted and now are being shared by the two different people who share the same magnetic field. Their brains, both those brains are now effectively one. But the effect extends experience. If both people separated by distance share the same configuration of magnetic field, a light flash, just a light flash, to one person affects the brain activity of the other sitting in the dark in another room. So what we found is that we can connect it to actual light. All right? The photon emission energy from the brain while a person is sitting in the dark is about 10,000 times less than the stars on a cloudy night. But we can measure it with photomultiplier tubes. However, it's 100 times more intense than the energy from the cosmic rays that pervade the universe. Now, I know you're thinking that this is really, really weak, but let me do an experiment real quick. Okay. Effectively, you're listening to me right now, and the sounds you're hearing are in the order of about a millipascal in terms of pressure. That's what you're listening. About 40 to 50 decibels, a millipascal. And presumably you're listening to me. Right now, above you, there's over 100 kilopascals of pressure. A billion times more pressure on your body right now than the pressure associated with me talking with you and you listening. Can you hear the atmosphere? It's a billion times more. Of course you can't. It's not the intensity. It's the pattern. The pattern is the critical thing. So never underestimate the importance of the pattern. It's not the intensity. And furthermore, if we take something like this, like one of these nice little cinnamon, and I drop it just like that. I dropped it this way. That's about a microjoule of energy. Now, for you to see a light in the dark, that only takes about 10 to the minus 17th joules. That's a decimal point followed by 16 zeros and a 1, which means this is a microjoule, which means that energy from dropping that right now would be enough to light up every eye of every human being on this planet. The critical thing is the energy and the pattern that detects it. Never think bigness is important. So, here's what happens. 
If, for example, we have one person in one room having a flashing light, another person in another room completely in the dark, completely in the dark, and they only share the magnetic field, a special kind of configurational magnetic field that produces a synthetic consciousness, making both brains the same. When there is no flash in the other room, this person has theirs on the left, that's what's coming off the side of their head. If the person in the other room is seeing a flashing light, an ordinary dull flashing light, the person sitting in the dark, their brain also generates light because they're connected, even at a distance. Is there evidence of information transfer? We are now measuring photon emission from the human brain. That's how we think it's working. And you can see, if we took you, for example, and we asked you to sit down inside of a quiet room, and on the, the left hemisphere, the left side of the brain, right hemisphere, right side of the brain, notice that when a person is simply relaxing and just thinking about casual thoughts, for example, like something easy and refreshing, like how many hours I'm going to study tonight, on the other hand, if on the focus you say, okay, now I want you to think of white light. Just think of white light. Right? That's all you have to do. Notice the left hemisphere doesn't do anything. The right hemisphere, if you're relaxing, doesn't differ. The vertical axis is the amount of energy, and I can tell you what it is. It's about 10 to the minus 11 watts per meter squared. All right. You can't see it. You need a machine, a photomultiplier tube to see it. But notice on the right hemisphere, when you ask a person to just think of white light, notice that under focus, on the right hemisphere, there's almost a doubling of output. That's right, and now we know in neuroscience that it's very likely, Bokan and other people have actually shown this, that there's light emission from retina, that when you're actually thinking about white light, there's just not action potentials and neurons firing, there's actually photons being emitted within your brain. Right? Actual photons, and we can measure them. The minute you have photons,